Our next comedian is once again a physicist. Oh my god, the excitement. Please welcome to the stage, Daniel Perez. So, I have a question for you. Do you know what Tinder is? <laughs> uh, you know you know really well. well. For those of you pretending not knowing what Tinder is, Tinder is just a dating app. And like in other dating apps, you get matches, no? And then once you have a match, that is the potential candidate for going for a date. So you are able to, to chat with that person, okay? And here it comes a really crucial step, the icebreaker, okay? So you need to have a really clever, a really funny icebreaker to, to be successful in going for a date, okay? So I always want to sound really interesting and really clever, so I always go with these icebreakers icebreak talking about physics, so I try to explain what, what neutrino oscillations are, what <laughs> string theory is, or yeah, solar system physics, etc., etc. To my surprise, and I'm really puzzled, this never works. And I, I don't understand why. I thought people on Tinder they wanted interesting things. Eh? Well, actually, once it worked. So I was talking to this 57-year-old feminist guy, and we have a really intense conversation about the solar system. No, he was really interested in Pluto and, and the last frontier on the solar system. And yeah, he, he, we talked, I think, for half an hour, more or less, and at the end, he proposed to go for a date. But at this moment, I had to stop. I said, no way, I'm going to a date with you. You are obsessed with Pluto, and my interest is in Mars, the red planet, no? So if you're interested about Pluto, forget about me. And immediately, I deleted from my matches. <laughs> so, well, as I said, Mars now is, is trendy, no? There is a trendy topic with Mars. We have this great movie, The Martian. I think it was released this week. Then four, four weeks ago, the just NASA confirmed the presence of liquid water in the red planet. And these are huge news. These are great, great news. Liquid water is what you need in a life to be in a planet to be able to this for this planet to host life. Okay? So they released these beautiful pictures of canals made made by flowing water. Actually, the name, the technical name is not canal. The technical name of these features is recurring slope lineage. Okay? So apparently, if you are a planetary scientist, who are the people who give these names, if you name something which is a canal with canal, it's too trivial, and then your peers doesn't respect you anymore. <laughs> Anyways, um, as I said, uh, actually, if you pay attention at the beginning, I said confirm. Yeah, confirm, because it has been known that there is water in Mars for more than 10 years. What's happened? This water is in its solid form. It's ice. There are tons and tons of ice in Mars. There are ice under the Martian soil. Also, there are tons of ice in the poles of the planets. And there is nothing wrong with ice. Ice has some great applications. Actually, one of the most sophisticated cocktails you can ever have. <laughs> Has been, be, has been possible thanks to ice. Yeah, I'm talking about gin tonic. Huh? What is a gin tonic with ice? But ice is not great for life. If you want a planet to host life, you need liquid water. So um, another feature of uh, the water they found is like it's not always there. It's seasonally. So it appears during a period of time that the experts call the warm season also known for the rest of the, of the mortals as summer. <laughs> and yeah, moreover, this water is not that pure water you just can drink out of it. It's salty water. But remarkably, this salty water is really similar to the water we find here in the sea on Earth, as, because it also contains chlorine, manganese, or sodium. So probably you made this connection already, because I think you're really clever people, OK? Otherwise, you couldn't be here tonight. Am I right? <laughs> So, if there is salty water on Mars, and at the same time there are tons and tons of sand, because you have, in, you have seen pictures of Mars, right? There is nothing but a huge desert. Then there is clearly a beach on Mars. We can go there, take a swim, go on holidays, even drink gin tonic on Mars. This is great. This is really great. Please hold your excitement, because there are a few details you might consider before going to Mars and holiday for drinking gin tonic. 
First of all, this water they found there is really muddy, no? Because you have to imagine this a mixture of these salts. It contains water and the sand and dust of the surface. So let's say Mars is as close to half a beach as Belgium is to half a proper summer day, basically. <laughs> then the second consideration is we don't have the technology to send people to Mars yet, okay? This is sad, but it's true, it's reality. We don't have the technology yet. Maybe you heard something about a project called Mars One. Is it familiar for you? Yes. See, this project was intended to settle the first human colony in the red planets. And this sounds great. Finally, after years and years of promising humans in Mars, we'll get it. Mars One, good period project. So, ah, by the way, you even as an individual, you could apply to become one of the first settlers of Mars. Of Mars, you wouldn't even need to be a professional astronaut. So that is great. Uh, by the way, this, did any of you apply for becoming one of the first settlers of Mars? It won't. Don't answer yet. Just in case, I'm warning you because now I'm going to slap you with the whole reality in your face. Okay? <laughs> this project was a big scam, a planetary scam. Neither NASA, SpaceX or the European Space Agency, the three big guys in space exploration, they were involved. But on top of that, the promoter of this project was Paul Romer. Probably this name doesn't bring anything to you. That doesn't ring any bell. But what if I tell you that this guy was the creator of Big Brother in Holland? <laughs> Do you see where this is going? Yes, yeah, so this guy was a genius. He, want, he wanted to create a reality show about the Mars colonization, no? Sending people, the first four people in Mars, how they establish the colony, how they interact, how they make experiments. But there is a really, really obscure thing at the end. Because it would have been the first reality show in which all the contestants would have died at the end. This is really creepy because they wa the guy was just offering one way trip, okay? So, you see, the intention of these guys was really, really obscure and really cruel. cruel. I'm sure, well, I'm sure no one here ever would watch that TV show because all of you are really nice people and really lovely human beings, okay? So I'm quite sure no one would watch a TV show in which the contestant died at the end, right? Okay, I hope so. <laughs> so, yeah, I have, I have been, yeah, this is the reality of my exploration basically right now. But we must not desperate there eh? because we, monkey, we, we need to keep pursuing the dreams of conquering and traveling to other worlds. Not, not too late, we will arrive to Mars. We will discover life in the red planet. But the most important thing, Earth will no longer be the only planet in the solar system, solar system being able to host Big Brother. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Don't you believe? Yeah.